decision is going to be made according to the score that you have. You know about GPA, right? The application process is not difficult. Universities write everything on their website. As I told you, all the information is given in the university websites. So then you start building your own circle of friends. Mom said, so I have this problem, can you help me solve it and so on. Uh, of course, like the third one is learning to be independent. As I told you like earlier, like there is nobody to help you. You haven't done grocery shopping yet. Have you? All of you have done grocery shopping? And the great thing is that there is no Tanish Bilish. Nobody is going to say, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to hire my... But I wanted it. I wanted to experience something new and to learn something new. And uh, there is a good process, which is called referral. Deal breaker here. The airports are usually very far from the city. The tickets to go to the country are cheap, but if you want to go to the city center from the airport, it's going to be expensive. you should decide okay first step would be of course like you study English you finish your bachelor's if you want to go to study master's or just finish your school college lyceum doesn't doesn't matter and then you decide on the faculty you want to study this is the first step and uh, when you decide on the faculty decide on the country okay and firstly I think you should also consider the budget because the country of your choice usually depends on your budget Right? I mean, like if you are full of cash, go up to America. If not, maybe some other countries. So, like, think about these steps before you actually start your preparation and prepare your documents. Okay? So, decide on the faculty, decide on the country you want to study, and your budget. Maybe we can replace the budget with the country because usually, as I said, they are like correlated with each other. And um, how to find a good university and how to actually prepare your documents and how to understand that you are actually like, suitable to apply cer to certain university. First of all, find out about the requirements of the university because each university ha can have different requirements. You know what are the requirements, right? What's the requirement? Needs of the university, right? For example, what they want you to have so that you go there to study. For example, in Uzbekistan, to apply to governmental universities, you need to take the test, right? The hardest, I like this test. I mean, you know. So find out the requirements. Most of the universities abroad, they don't ask you to take any tests. This is good. They usually ask for your diploma from the previous education. Usually this is, if you're applying for masters, it's diploma from bachelors. If they are asking you to apply for bachelors, it's from school, from college, license, and so on. And here, your, let's say, uh, decision is going to be made according to the score that you have. You know about GPA, right? What's GPA? Yeah, average score from the previous education, yes. GPA is actually, I mean, like, usually in the requirements, they write uh, what's minimum. Okay, for example, 4.5 or 4 and so on. Like uh, good universities, high profile universities, they usually ask for higher like score and not good ones, they can accept you as well. I mean, not you, I mean like if their score is not very good. Check whether you match with these requirements um, and then gather up all the documentation that you need to apply. Usually, you know, it's not a lot, it's just your diploma, translated version as well. And sometimes they can ask you also for a postal. A postal is legalization they check whether your diploma is actually valid and legit, okay? And this document is usually given by notarial offices or from the university that you study, okay? They usually ask for that. To apply, you just need your passport, you need your diploma, and of course, language certificate, if you have one. Okay, so these three, four documents, it's not a lot. That's why you can also do it yourself. I mean, the application process is not difficult. Universities write everything on their website. So you can just go, apply, uh, fill everything, we can ask for help, for somebody's help, but you can also do it yourself. So, uh, and apply to several universities. This is also good to always have backup, okay? Don't just go, I mean, for example, a couple of years ago in Uzbekistan, maybe five years ago, six years ago, it was like that. You apply to one university, you're accepted, you're good. You're not accepted, one year, year failed. Now you have so much, like more, right? You have so many choices. You can apply to Uzbek universities, you can apply to foreign universities in Uzbekistan, you can apply to foreign universities in the world as well. Okay, so always have backup. Don't apply to one university only. I mean, 
if you apply to Uzbek University, now you have five options. It's not enough, okay? Apply to other universities as well. The more options you have, the better, because like you will think about it and you will be uh, making the choice, not them, okay? So you will be like, okay, I, I like applied and I got accepted here, here, here. I will choose this one or that one. And about like how to apply, actually. So there are two ways. You can apply yourself or you can ask for the help of some different consulting agencies. Now there are so many of them. Um, I would say I myself use the help of agency because I don't like the documentation process. You know, like I tend to make mistakes, for example, I can write everything correctly, but if it's documentation, I tend to get worried and anxious and I can make a mistake there. So I, and it takes time, you know, searching and stuff, but I would suggest that you do it yourself because it's a great experience, you know, it's not difficult. Uh, you just go there, I mean, yes, they charge you money, I mean, nothing is done for free, right? They charge you money, so go for consultation. Consultations are uh, free of charge. So you can just go, there are so many, like you can go to one of the uh, consulting agencies, you can say, so my uh, level is this, I have this language certificate, I graduated this university, now I want to apply for masters, for example. And they give you the options, like you can go there, 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 these countries, they can accept you, so and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you can go to like consultation, as I said, you can compare the universities and the choices they gave, and you can choose yourself. And this one, of course, like you do it yourself. As I told you, all the information is given in the university websites. And there are so many like channels now in Telegram, like they can even, they write everything. So now you can apply for this university, the requirements are this, this and that, and so on, okay? And like search for the university of your choice and follow the steps, that's all. And all the universities, they usually have support, like tech support or something, so you can text them, like, I want to apply to university, to your university, what should I do, and so on. They usually help you, okay? And I would, I mean, if you have time, just do this one. If you don't have time and you don't want to bother doing all this documentation, go to consulting agencies, okay? Now, um, let's start with the, like, no, not this one, we need next. Okay. Let's talk about benefits of studying abroad now. I mean, let's start with the good ones, right? I mean, we'll talk about challenges a bit later. Um, so firstly, like if we talk about benefits, of course, there are, there are a lot of them. I mean, you go out of your comfort zone, which is the first big benefit, I guess, because all of us are so much used to living with our parents, right? Getting their help in everything. It's like, mom, dad, so I have this problem. Can you help me solve it? And so on. But when you go abroad, there is nobody to go to. I mean. You cannot call your parents every day and say, you know, I have this difficulty, my food is bad, or something like that. So you go out of your comfort zone and you do these, like, challenges, and you get a, I mean, you become a better person. I guess this is the best one. I mean, this is the best benefit. So I'm talking, I mean, going through my points here. So first one is different education system. Uh, that's true, and uh, I can tell from the, for example, Polish University, education system is really different. And um, I mean, there is not, not like it's better or worse, it's different, okay? I mean, I don't wanna here say that our education system is bad. No, it's, it's good, it's good. Okay, I mean, and here, I mean, there it's also a good one because I like that they gave you a choice of subjects that you want to study, this is first. And usually if you have certain specialization, they kind of try to uh, do everything that you study this one only, okay? You won't be studying uh, PR or something if you are studying IT, okay? I mean, everything will be like specialized. This is good. And um, education system differs from the one that we have and therefore I think like it's good. I guess, yeah, therefore helps, I wrote. Okay, next one, opportunity to meet new people and make new friends. And um, do you think it's good? No, of course it's good, right? Yes, you, uh, like, going abroad is actually a great chance to enlarge your networking, make many, many friends, uh, understand that uh, Uzbekistan or your thinking is not the only correct one. There are so many people around that have different th way of thinking and they are also good people. So you get to know them. Um, you start valuing maybe your country more. Uh, you, I mean, when you start missing your parents, you of course value them more as well. And uh, having more friends, of course, is a great, I guess, chance to um, 
to become better in every sphere, not like a person, like a person, I mean like a profession as well. Because uh, when you uh, change your surrounding, because if you leave like Uzbekistan, you go there, you will start from scratch, right? I mean, you won't, you won't have anybody to talk to in the beginning. So then you start building your own circle of friends. And there will be people like you, like uh, the ones who also came to another country to study, to work, doesn't matter. And it's good that you start to, to connect and you learn from each other. And it's a great opportunity to meet new people, as I said. And uh, of course, like the third one is learning to be independent. Um, like, I guess independency in Uzbekistan, I mean, as a personal quality is a bit problematic. Uh, because um, we are so much attached to our parents, like, I mean, we are very much, I'm, I'm not saying it's bad, but sometimes uh, it affects our personality and not in a good way. So this is a great chance to experience independence and to learn to cope and deal with the issues yourself. As I told you like earlier, like there is nobody to help you at the right time like there and you cannot call all the time like your parents here, right? I mean they will be very much worried if you do that. So it's a great chance to become more independent, to learn to live yourself, to do everything yourself, uh, to deal with your finances, uh, to do grocery. Maybe some of you haven't done grocery shopping yet. Have you? All of you have done grocery shopping? You know what I mean? Like going and buying products, food and stuff. Have all of you done that? Okay. I mean, there you will have to do it because there is nobody else to do it for you. And, okay, going next, um, I would say that especially if you study in European universities, there is a great chance to work in multinational companies. Um, I'm not uh, sure about other countries because I know in Italy and in UK, in France, it's a bit problematic to find a work, a job in a good company because they don't usually hire students. But about Poland, Poland has... Um, branches of a lot of multinational companies like for example Google, there is Amazon, Accenture, maybe you know about this one, like a lot of good companies, they have their own branches there and they hire students. They hire students and they give chance to students that are also internship programs, you know what's internship, right? I mean, internship is like a program, they hire you, they give you like for example three months period, they teach everything you learn and if you're good you will stay in this company as a worker. And the great thing is that there is no Tanish Belish, so you can really get a job here. I mean, like, nobody's going to say, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to hire my uncle's son or somebody else. So if you are good, if you have good CV, which is very important if you're going abroad to have a good CV, if you have good CV, if you are confident, if your English is good, you have pretty much like good chance to work in multinational company. I have friends who work uh, in... Google, I have friends who work in Amazon there, and I have friends who work in, uh, there is a bank called JP Morgan, do you, do you have you heard about this bank? It's also a multinational bank, it's American, JP Morgan, CT, Bank, they are all like very good companies and I have friends who work there. Uh, I myself, I recently got a job in uh, an American company called Nielsen IQ, um, it's also a good one. Uh, I'm doing something completely different from teaching, but I wanted it. I wanted to experience something new and to learn something new. And uh, the, a good thing about working in this kind of corporations, first months or first two months, they teach. They pay you money and they teach you how to do the job. I mean, in Uzbekistan, if they teach you, they don't pay you, right? Yeah, I mean, if you go there, you learn and you are paid. And I guess uh, yeah, that's good. And also, like, um, there is good chance that you will get promoted and so on. So like it's a great chance to start working in an international environment there. And I like uh, this thing actually, this is very good. Uh -huh, my pictures are not shown, that's great. But still, okay, there were my pictures from traveling, okay, so just imagine there. Um, so the best part, I guess, and the one that I like the most is chance to travel abroad. And um, Traveling abroad within Europe is pretty cheap. Uh, because, for example, they have this internal flights, for example, around the Europe. I will tell you my first ticket. First, I traveled to Belgium from Warsaw. Um, what do you think? How much was the flight ticket to go and come back to Warsaw? Any guesses? $1,000, $50, $200. Any other options? 20 euros, okay, that's close. 
What else? <laughs> okay, it was eleven dollars. <laughs> yes, it was eleven dollars because we bought the ticket like one month before. It cost me eleven dollars. I spent eleven dollars to go to Tashkent from Angrian and come back. Good, right? Yes, um, traveling uh, internationally is cheap there. Um, and if you book your tickets like from two months before, it's even like great. The, okay, there is a break, deal breaker here. The airports are usually very far from the city. So they are like the oh, countryside of the city. So you will have to take a train to go there. And, and uh, my ticket from the airport to the city center of the Belgium was more expensive than my ticket to go to Belgium. So it's like that. I mean, the tickets to go to the country are cheap, but if you want to go to the city center from the airport, it's gonna be expensive. But yeah, usually like um, you can travel for two, three days maximum for 300 euros. Like, I mean, it's great, right? I mean, to go to Samarkand, you spend this much money. So yeah, it's a great, ah, my pictures are here. Okay, that's great. And, um, and that's great that there are some buses and trains to travel and you can also see the city itself. And it's a good thing that there are usually also uh, cheap tickets for students. If you are a student in a European country, uh, you will get 50% discount for transport tickets, like almost everywhere. So like go there before you're 26. And uh, also like, uh, what else I want to say about traveling? It's a great chance like, to see the world, to experience new things, to experience new cultures, to eat new food, and so on. So like, if you go to Europe, and I'm sure like, it's also true about other countries, it's cheaper to go to another country from there, as I told you. Okay, going on. Now we need the next one. Okay, still not, not visible, but that's fine. Um, also, there is a great chance to learn about other cultures and I find it fascinating actually because uh, when you experience uh, other cultures, it's interesting to see, right? And you understand how much you are different from them and how much your culture is different from them. And I have a group of friends who are from different countries and we usually come to each other like, and discuss what's in our country, for example, what are the weddings like. And when I tell them about our weddings, they're like, wow, wow. So you should invite us to our wedding. And I said, yes, yes, definitely. And um, yes, the best part is not only knowing about their culture, but also to tell, talking about your own. And, uh, for example, in Warsaw, there are three or four Uzbek restaurants. Yeah, you can find Osh anywhere. So, and I uh, try to take my friends there, and they liked our food. It, it's good. I will talk about food as well. Like, I guess the next slide was about food. Ah, no. Okay. And the next one is about socializing. For example, what do you think? Do, you have, do we have, like, a great social life here? Do you understand what, what, what I mean when I say social life? What is it? And what do you understand by social life? Is it like just Instagram and Facebook? No. Communication, making new friends, yes. The different events, right? I mean, we, I'm not saying we don't have at all, but we have very little chance to socialize. Uh, maybe like they are working on it now, but now like, I mean, it still wishes to be better. And in European countries, actually, you can usually find like social circles anywhere. For example, if you're a book lover, there are book clubs. If you are, uh, I don't know, a football player, you can go and there play football. There are also meetings for uh, volleyball clubs. Uh, for example, me, myself, I found a group uh, on Facebook. I mean, when I first went there, uh, I was a bit lonely because I didn't know anyone. I mean, like, I knew some people from Uzbekistan, but, you know, when you don't have the same interests, you don't meet with these people, right? And I tried to search for people, and then I found a group on Facebook, which was like Warsaw Girl International, and it was a group for girls from uh, around the world who came to Warsaw. And I joined this group, and it was so friendly. They usually organize like weekly events. They ask each other to come to join for a coffee and stuff. And I met my friends there. I mean, like I went there one time, and we made this circle of friends who we meet like commonly, and we share the same interests, and it's great fun. And um, great social life. Uh, like also there are, as I told you, different clubs, different events. It's it's fun. Like I really like it. And as I told you, like different activities, events, ger gatherings, also to meet anybody's needs. It's like, according to your interests, you can find like any club that you can join. You can have fun there. 
It's great. Uh, for example, this one is my choir. Um, I, I like singing. Like it, it has been my passion for all of my life, I guess. And I found that there is a choir in my university. You know, it's a choir, right? It's a group of people singing. My brother laughs at me. He's like, you know, I like at school sing and like stand. So it's like a club of people who sing. Uh, we like sing and perform in some concerts at university and stuff. So I joined this club and I made like great uh, friends. I made great uh, ma meet there. I met their great people. It's it's great fun. So this is what I want to say. You can meet their people uh, who have the same interests with you, and you can develop and become better in this sphere as well. So going to the next one, I guess. Ah, okay. So now, like, ah, one more thing I didn't mention uh, is that one more benefit is that most of the uh, countries abroad they are all very student friendly. Do you understand what I mean when I say student friendly? What is it? Like any examples? Hmm? Intelligence. I mean, this one as well. Communication, right? You mean? Okay. Close. What else? Like, what is student friendly? Yes, this is as well. But what is exactly student friendly? Sorry? Aha, uh -huh, this is also. Yes, for example, when something is user friendly, what is it? Like, if. If I say my phone is user friendly, what does it mean? Comfortable, yes. And when I say student friendly, I mean that these countries are very comfortable and very, uh, let's say, they have very much like chance and facilities for students. For example, as I told you, you have 50% discount for transport, like for all the students. Uh, if you want to go to museum, it costs like one zloty in Poland, and which is like 2,500 sum. Like, you can go to any museum, and there are some days when it's free, and for students, it's like, almost all the time, it's very cheap. Um, there are, for example, uh, do you know that in Louvre, it's free for students? Yes, I mean, in Paris, the Museum of Louvre is free for students who are European students under age of 26. And the same is with Versailles. Like, it's, it's free. If you're a student in European Union and you go there, it's free. And there are so many other, like, opportunities. You go to eat some food, there are usually discounts for students, and there are events for students. Like, so the countries are very much friendly towards students. So, like, and in Germany it's the same, and it's even better than in Poland, I know. It's very student friendly. There are so much opportunities, like, and so many discounts, like, which students like, right? So yeah, you, you have a great chance to travel because it's cheap and to see some, some parts uh, of the country that you're living, to eat cheaper, let's say, and so on. So I guess now we can move to the challenges. Of course, there are challenges and there will be challenges. And um, so let's talk about them. Like, let's discuss what are the challenges. So first thing is cultural differences. Uh, before, when I read about culture shock, I was like, Okay, so it's culture shock, so what does it matter for me, right? Um, and I didn't really believe in it. Let's say I knew that there is a, such a thing as culture shock, there are stages when you're new and when you like everything and then you experience it and you cannot accept it and the third stage is when you can accept it. And it was true. And when we say culture shock, you know, it's not only about the culture itself, but the people, the way of living there and the way they maybe talk or interact with each other and so on. It was new for me and uh, I was a bit depressed in the beginning. Yeah, I had like, I don't know, a month of depression and I was like, oh, okay. It was a hard time, but it was worth it. It was worth it. I mean, like, when you pass the stage, you're, okay, I passed it, now I'm good. And it may be difficult to adjust, as I told you, and also it may be difficult to accept their system too. Because, and by the system, I say how they do things. Okay, for example, even let's say you want to buy something, it may be like different there. And I usually try to avoid communication, and there are self checkouts, and I just go there so that I avoid talking to the cashier or shop assistant. So, like, I mean, there are some things that will be difficult for you to accept in the beginning. But, like, of course, it's up to you to your understanding of the culture, because uh, when I was living, they usually tell that the Poland, is, Poland is not too different, right? It's also post-Soviet country, like, but still, like, even if you go to Kazakhstan, there will be some differences, right? So, yeah, be ready. If you're ready, it will be easier for you to pass this challenge and pass this period. 
Okay, the next thing is difficulties in studies. So as I told you, the study system is different. And of course, first of all, it's going to be a bit difficult for you to adjust. Um, classes and assignments are conducted only in English. And if your English is not very good, of course, you will have some difficulties. Um, for example, when you are taking uh, the, some tests or when you are uh, finishing the semester, uh, there will be different assignments than the ones that you have here, right? I mean, in Uzbekistan, we, what, what kind of assignments do we do when we finish the semester? Test, right? Some assignment writing in the written form. And there, every teacher decides for himself or herself how they want their students to pass the test. Yeah, for example, uh, I remember in the first semester we did some like, I was supposed to shoot a video of myself talking about a certain topic. And then we wrote some dissertation paper, not dissertation, but like kind of a thesis paper. And it's not like we do here, referat, okay? I mean, it's not like copy from the, I mean, like Google, and then you write it. No, they will check everything. And they will assess it a bit like, I mean, they really assess it, okay? It's not like, okay, he did it, okay, put him some five, right? No, uh, it will be different. And, um, but it's good different, okay? It's not like it's too difficult. No, it's not difficult, it's just different. And in the beginning, it will be a bit like hard to adjust maybe, but you'll be fine, I'm sure. I mean, I see that you are eager to go and eager to learn, so you'll be fine. The next one, financial troubles, of course, like, I mean, how's it without that? In the beginning, and by financial troubles, you know, I don't only mean that there will be difficulties, you don't have money, no. For example, um, do you use coins in Uzbekistan? Do you keep them? Okay, you keep them, right? But if it's like, if you drop it, will you pick it up? Rarely, right? And will you go it to your friend if he needs it? Of course you will. Because, I mean, it's not worth a lot. But in other countries, for example, one euro is like 10,000 soon. So like, and in the beginning you will be like, okay, it's a coin, so why do I need it? So please take it, please take it. And then you will realize that you're like spending your money, wasting your money. So there, uh, this kind of like currency differences there will be. And of course, like in the beginning, you might find it difficult to just, because you took, take money from here and you spend it there. It's a bit different thing. So that's why, like, of course, it's better if you get a job there. Because when you use the money that you earn it from that country, it's better to spend. Um, yeah, I mean, like, when you get to the country you plan to go, it will take some time to adapt to the currency differences and differences in, for example, the prices and so on. But it's interesting to learn as well. Next one, weather. Why I included weather? Because I went to Poland which is like mostly cold. And so I left uh, Tashkent in December. And you know, what's December like in Uzbekistan, right? It's sunny, like it's, I don't know, spring or something. And I went there and it was cold. And I didn't see the sun for the first two weeks. Can you believe that? No sun for two weeks. And I was like, where is sun? Like, okay, that's why they say that we come from sunny country. So it was very hard for me to adjust, and I guess that was the issue, and that was the reason of my stress and depression, because I didn't see the sun, and I'm like, I need sun, I need sun, and these are the pictures that I took when there was sun. <laughs> you see? I mean, no sun, but still, I mean, the sky was clear. Yeah, adaptation to the weather can take some time too, especially if you go to a different uh, weather, I mean, like, different climate, let's say. Because even uh, some students who go to Korea, they find it difficult to adjust because it's humid, as you know, and Uzbekistan it's dry, right? In very dry climate. And uh, if you go to UK, for example, you know, it's mostly cloudy and rainy, right? You will miss the sun, yes. I mean, we laugh about Musaf Osman, but you will miss Musaf Osman, that's true. Yeah, and usually, like, you know, uh, you might also have some, not problems, but adaptation to, I mean, like, your health will adapt. For example, I have a uh, lack of vitamin D, and you can guess why. Vitamin D is something we get from the sun, and if I don't see the sun, how can I get it, right? So that's why I came to Tashkent, like, three weeks to get my vitamin D. Okay, um, next one, you will be surprised. It's food. That's true. Um, although we say that uh, we here in Uzbekistan have, like, the unhealthiest food, but it's still the most delicious, right? And when you go there, you're gonna miss it. Uh, because, um, I don't know why, maybe like it's the way they grow their you know, plants or, or like feed their animals, but even meat tastes different. It's not as delicious as it's here. That's why people who go abroad, they lose weight. Because they don't eat, I mean like as much as they do here, and the food is not as fat as it is here. 
yeah, it, for me it was difficult to adapt to the food because, I mean, I ate pizza in Italy, but I still miss those backwood. Yeah, so it will take some time to adapt, but of course you can find a way to adjust, and maybe it's even better that you leave this fat Uzbek food. Yeah, because it's unhealthy. But yeah, and as you can see, like this uh, plov is the one that we bought in Warsaw. In Warsaw, like there are three or four Uzbek restaurants. Yeah, every Uzbek restaurant. Okay, next one. Uh, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about challenges that I myself faced, which I already mentioned. It was like adaptation to weather, because um, yeah, it was different, and I went in December, it was very cold already there, and here it was sunny and stuff. So yeah, it took me some time to adapt to the weather conditions, but then I really liked it, because the city is so green, because it's usually cloudy, it's usually rainy, and uh, Warsaw itself is full of parks and full of, like, you know, there is a forest in the middle of the city, which I really like. That's why the air condition is very good. For example, here, I feel that the air is so much polluted here. And there, like, I feel so good because the air is so clean and fresh because of the weather and because of the trees, like, everywhere trees. But we can't stop cutting them down, like, I don't know why. And, uh, of course, like, adaptation to food, I mean, it was not too difficult because, like, you can find anything there in supermarkets, like, there's everything. But, of course, like, you miss Uzbek food. Like, I, sometimes, like, I really want to eat samsa, but there is no samsa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, and uh, for me, it was a bit difficult to find a job because um, in the beginning, like, you need to work on your CV. Like, you know what CV, right? Yeah, your, like, resume, curriculum, and so on. Yes, you work on your CV. And, uh, like, yeah, there are, were some mistakes that I made. But, yeah, finding a job can also be a bit difficult. And uh, there is a good process, which is called referral. It's, let's say, official Tanish Belish, we can say. For example, if I work in one company, I can refer my friend to that company. I can recommend him, I can say, so I have a friend, but you don't say I have a friend. You just go to their system and go to referral and recommend somebody. So, um, like, if you go abroad, you can ask your friends to help you to find a job, if you want to find a job, of course. Um, socializing, of course, in the beginning, like, uh, I studied online in the beginning, and you can imagine, like, I'm all day home, like online classes when I see my course is just like through the screen. Yeah, I had some difficulties in socializing, but then as I told you, I find groups, I found groups, and then I uh, met my course mates in real life, yeah, and it became better. And of course, adjusting to, to their system was also a bit like problematic in the beginning. It takes time. So to the next slide now, we don't want food. I hope you weren't hungry. Okay, and some things, like living abroad as a student without romanticizing it. I mean, when we say go to study abroad, we we'll only like, think about good things, but there are, of course, some challenges which you should try to remember. Uh, it will be difficult in the beginning, just be, be ready for that, okay? It's good difficult, it's not like difficult, difficult that you cannot like, you know, live there. It's not easy to start a new life abroad, I mean, because it's a strange place for you, there are strange people, and of course it will take some time to adapt. Next thing is that you will have to learn how to deal with your problems yourself. But I guess it's not the issue, it's benefit, right? I mean, you learn to be independent, you cannot rely on your parents, and you cannot worry them with your basic needs and stuff, because they are not beside you. Uh, you might feel alone frequently. Um, this is something that like, kind of will be with you for, I mean, always maybe. All of us feel alone sometimes, right? <laughs> and I'm not saying it in a bad way. I mean, in the beginning you will feel lonely because you won't have like your close friends, right, around you. But then it will be, of course, like better. And be ready to experience some culture shock, if, as I told you. Like, culture shock is not only in books. Yeah, it's, it's real. So, and uh, moving on to the next part. So, why is it important, actually, to have a certificate while applying to a foreign university? I know some students, uh, they just learn English and then they find university which doesn't require to have IELTS certificate and then just go for it. My suggestion is that you don't do this, okay? I mean, don't look for easy ways. IELTS certificate is not just to apply to a university, right? It can provide you like with some, some other benefits, which I will be talking about now. So. Why to have a certificate? So first reason would be that you will have more options to choose from. Okay, of course, like, as you know, most of the high profile universities, they ask for a language certificate. I mean, it doesn't have to be IELTS. It can be TOEFL, it can be uh, Cambridge Learning Assessment, something like that, and then there is uh, Duolingo, right? 
was it Duolingo? Yeah, I mean like you can give any, that it should be language certificate. Uh, and you will be able to apply to many places at the same time, right? I mean with language, with IELTS certificate, you will have a chance to apply to many, many universities. Uh, second reason would be you can apply to different scholarships. So if you want to win a scholarship without IELTS, like there is no chance. I mean, they will not say, okay, this guy is coming to our university. Please come, we will pay your studies. No, right, it's not gonna be like that. Of course, you will need to have IELTS certificate because, um, I mean, they will know that your English level is great, so they will be like privileged to have you in their university. So that's why it's good to have language certificate, any of it. And, as I told you, to apply for a scholarship, you will need a certificate, and having a high score increases your chances. Um, usually scholarships, like, they start from 6.57, but of course, if you have a high score, your chances will increase. Um, of course, you want to win scholarship, right? Everybody wants to win scholarship, yeah. And um, sometimes, like, uh, let's say, if you took IELTS for the first time and it wasn't very good, you can, like, I mean, apply and then take it again, and then apply for scholarship, that's also fine. Uh, next reason would be that uh, during the test preparation you become familiar with academic language, which is very good. As you know, when you go to university, your studies will be in English, right? I mean, they will not be like, so this guy came from Uzbekistan, let's conduct lessons in Uzbek. No, of course it will be in English, and IELTS preparation process and IELTS test, IELTS language can help you to become more familiar and ready to the process of I don't know, to the classes, to the lectures, right? Because language is usually the same. But if you haven't prepared, if you just finished general English and went there, of course you won't be ready for that. And IELTS provides great um, chance, great opportunity, <clears throat> I'm sorry, to learn and to adjust to the language level of these students, yeah. So that's why I like use it as a chance to improve your skills. Uh, next one, to apply to different programs. As you know, when you go abroad, I mean, you don't, have to study and you don't have to stay in this university for uh, t until you finish university, right? As you know, there are so many exchange programs, there are so many chances like for conferences, for uh, studying abroad for some time and coming back to the host country and so on. And for example, if you study in European University, there is a program called Erasmus. Uh, like they write about it a lot in students' books. Have you ever heard about Erasmus? Uh, okay, so Erasmus is exchange program for students uh, who study in European countries. Like you can study for one or two semesters in another country. For example, if you're studying in France, you can go to Italy for one semester and come back. So that's kind of programs. And if you have IELTS, of course, you have better chances to go there. For example, I myself, I applied for Erasmus and I was supposed to go to Spain. I won the scholarship, but I decided that I better gonna be stay, uh, stay in Warsaw because I mean, there was documentation process which I decided that it's not worth giving a shot, but if you are studying bachelors, it's worth it. For masters, like, uh, you can think like, why do I need to study one semester and come back? Because for bachelors, you can study one whole year there. And I guess it's a great chance. And there is also a scholarship called Erasmus Mundus, uh, which can provide you opportunity to study at the same time in three places and get three different diplomas. So it will be like you study one year in France, one year in Italy, one year in Spain and then you finish. And most of the European universities, uh, they kind of provide three years for bachelors. So you study only three years to get bachelor's diploma, which I really like. I mean, four years sometimes is a waste of time, unfortunately. So yeah, it provides a great chance, as I told you, to apply for scholarships, to apply for different programs, and if you go to study abroad, use this chance, okay? Because, um, I mean, if you went there, like, why not to use this chance? So if you have IELTS, you will be always a great con candidate, okay? So there were two more reasons that I remember. Yeah. Uh, reason number five, it can be useful while you're searching for a job. Uh, usually students who go abroad, um, they can look for jobs in, for example, uh, customer service. You know what's customer service, right? I mean, like dealing with clients and so on. And they usually ask for English. Or you can go to uh, and apply for some office jobs and they still ask for English. So they may not ask for your certificate, but if you have IELTS, of course, it will be better because you will be uh, familiar with academic language and so on. And reason number six, I guess it was the last one, can be important in visa decision. And this is true. Uh, some students who uh, apply, as I told you, there are some students who just apply to universities without IELTS certificate, and sometimes they get rejected from visa decision. 
because they don't have IELTS certificate and the council, let's say this uh, embassy, can think that your purpose is not to go to study. It's to go there and work or stay there and not come back and so on. So uh, that's true. I mean, I've heard some examples when students didn't have IELTS certificate and they didn't get their visas. So having IELTS like, makes it clear that you want to go there to study. Okay? Um, I think this is all from my side. Uh, so now, like, if you have any questions, I'm ready to answer them. Like, don't be shy. It can be about anything, so use this chance. So please? You can ask in Uzbek. Yes, please? Okay, um, that's a good question, yes. Uh, Schengen visa is a great one because like, it provides, like, I mean, once you get it, you can travel all around the Europe. The visa requirements are up to the uh, country that you're applying, but mostly it's the same. Uh, they ask you to provide your um, acceptance letter from university that you applied because like once you get accepted in the university they send you this acceptance letter you provide this and then some other documents like insurance a bank statement that you have certain amount of money in your balance but we know how people do that nowadays and some other documents uh, usually like you know challenges can be when you go and talk to the people who decide you should be confident there, okay? Uh, if you uh, apply with the help of consulting agencies, they usually provide the list of questions that you can be asked while with a decision. But the most important thing, uh, so you prepare the documents and always be confident about yourself, okay? Go there and don't be like, okay, please, please give me a visa. I mean, they see it and they feel it. So that's why be confident about your skills. You're not going there to rob their country or something. You're going to study and you are money for them because you're going to pay, right? I mean, you're going to live there. So be confident about yourself. Just go there, answer their questions like in a calm, peaceful way. And I guess you will be fine. You're welcome. Anybody else? Oh, come on. Don't you have any questions? Yes, please. Uh, for my expenses, okay, for the first year, I uh, got 100% scholarship, so I didn't pay any tuition. But usually, uh, you pay first registration fee for university. Uh, for example, some universities, they ask you, and most of the American universities, they also ask, in order to apply to university, you need to pay a registration fee. Uh, it's usually around from 100 to 200 dollars euros. So I spent this, and then uh, to visa, like you need to pay for, uh, like when you enter like this place, you need to pay for visa, and then you need to pay for your insurance and stuff. I guess like before I left, uh, without my ticket, I spent around maybe one thousand, one thousand five hundred dollars, and then you buy your ticket and stuff, and you take money for your expenses. But Poland is not uh, the most expensive country. It's up to the country that you are planning to go. Because um, the requirements can also be different according to the country you're going to. For example, to America you cannot go with 1,500. <laughs> yes, I mean, because the tuition itself will be higher. So it's up to the country, but yeah, it's up to the country, so you can search about it. For example, if you want to apply to America, of course it will be higher. Okay, please, you wanted to ask a question, I guess. Was it you? Ah, okay. Конечно. Тоже. Да. Угу. А, получается, вначале у нас был только онлайн. Да, и мы переходим на офлайн обучение вот с этого семестра. Но вообще в Польше все перешли с марта получается. Это получается 2022 год, с марта все перешли на офлайн обучение. Вот. Но, как вы знаете, у всех по-разному requirements. И э, из-за короны многие закрылись. Это, по-моему... Да, это из-за короны было. Нет, а так обычно, да. Это из-за короны это просто было онлайн, да. Yes, please? Нет, за что? Yes. Okay, uh, about medicine, it's a bit a tricky question because I know that in uh, American universities they don't accept our medical diploma, but in European countries, I guess they, they should. 
So you should uh, search for the university or for the country that you're applying and like uh, check whether they accept your university diploma. But mostly they do. But as I told you about medicine, it's a bit problematic because like and medicine and usually law can be a bit problematic because it's something that taught differently. But you said pharmaceuticals, right? Which faculty? Pharma. Ah, okay. So you should check that. I'm not sure. But European universities should accept. Should accept. And usually, like for medicine, I would recommend German. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, why Paul? Why did you choose US? Yeah. Okay, that's a good question. Um, actually, like when I was applying, I wanted Europe. Actually, not US, because I'm planning to go to yes, US, but it, you know, requires some sort of financial stability. And I was not ready for that, honestly. I mean, like, I'm not going to hide anything because it requires some financial stuff. So that's why, like, I didn't even risk it. I wanted Europe first. And uh, at the moment when I was applying, uh, the best choice for me was Poland because um, I applied in August. And as you know, other, like, European universities, they usually close application in even May, right? Like, remember that, by the way. Like, if you want to apply for a better university, start earlier. And I didn't start early. And I applied in August. So, and uh, for me, like there were choices like uh, Litva, like Poland, Turkey, uh, Germany, and so on. So, and I chose Poland because uh, for me, like the. And the thing is, uh, for my diploma, it was also better because I graduated World Languages University, but I wanted to study international relations. And if I went to the US, they would not uh, accept me for this faculty. And even in UK, in Germany, they wouldn't accept me. They would tell me, you, sh you studied English, go study English. And Poland accepted my diploma and accepted, accepted me in this international relations faculty. So that's why I decided to go there. And honestly, I don't regret my decision. Like, I mean, uh, all countries are good to study. Of course, some of them are higher and better. But for the beginning, it, it was nice. So I hope I answered your question. You're yeah, welcome. Anybody else? Yes, please. Can okay, I will ask you. Uh -huh. Other students, you mean? Ah, okay. Uh, usually it's like that. In all universities, there are studies in two like, languages, in Polish and in English. In Polish one, there are some, I mean like, uh, most of the locals study in Polish, but some of them study in English. For example, I myself, I don't have a single Polish a student in my faculty, mostly they're all foreigners. But as I told you, some of them prefer to study in English and they can go. But yeah, they don't like provide separate courses for international students. They just provide like English courses and Polish, yes. Uh, do the student at university provide any facilities for international students, some kind of um, Yes, they do. And mostly uh, like if you want to apply for Poland, apply for governmental universities. Don't apply for private universities because governmental universities, they provide scholarships, they provide accommodation, and they are usually high ranking universities. So like try, try this one and they really do provide if you have good score and if you have good like IELTS. It's up to that. So please. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you want to apply for bachelors. Uh, yes, yes. You just don't, yeah, of course. I mean, you want to s apply for bachelors? Uh, yes, I mean, they don't mind it. You can just say, uh, even you don't have to show your diploma. They will not ask for it. Uh, it's just that uh, they apply, um, you can apply until you're 30, and then you're fine. Okay, I mean, if you're, I mean, not 30, I'm sorry, 27. 27, yeah. You can apply for bachelors, like, until 27. So if you're not 27, you're okay. They won't even ask you whether you studied or not. So you're good. You're welcome. So anyone else? Can you tell about the expenses? Uh, living expenses. Uh, it's also up to the country, of course. But, for example, uh, in Poland, I can say that the price of products are mostly the same as Uzbekistan. Sometimes a bit cheaper, sometimes a bit more expensive. So it's up to you and it's up to your expenses. Okay, average can be like $200, $300 a month for your food and stuff. And for your accommodation also the same, like $300, $400. So like for living and food, you can spend like $500, $600 maximum, maximum. 
like it's it's not too like expensive and I think it's the same in Germany too but in Germany accommodation is a bit more expensive but food should be the same but of course it's up to the country because I know like in France it's expensive in Belgium it's expensive like food is expensive but of course like if you are there if you're getting their money it would not make a difference for you but of course if your parents send you money it will be a bit difficult so that's why usually international students get jobs there because like I mean in the beginning, yes, it, it might be like, I mean, you cannot find a job immediately, but then later on, like, you should try, yeah, to learn, to cope with everything. So it's like that. It's up to the country. Yes, please? Uh, you mean research? Uh huh. Yes, of course, it will help you. Uh, for scholarships as well. Yeah, I mean, usually there are programs, they kind of give you the requirements and they tell you what you get if you do that. They can help you, yes. And usually, I mean, uh, you can even like kind of find some kind of supervisor and do this and finish your university earlier as well. Yeah, they, they can give you some benefits if you do that. Uh, worldwide. Worldwide, was they are here, I guess, somewhere in Hamza. Yes, please? Um, you know, like uh, for me, it took a month, I guess, maximum, and then I waited for a visa decision a long time. Yeah, like as you know, some um, agencies or some embassies they take a long time, like, to give you the visa. So overall, it took me three months to to prepare everything and leave. Yeah, I did. F to get scholarship, by the way, you need to write motivation letter. And successful motivation letter is the one which is written from the bottom of your heart. Okay, I mean like true example, true and good language, of course. Yeah, it's, I mean like if you're asking for scholarship, you cannot write it like my name is, right, and so on. So it should be good language. Yes? Ah, it's like the notarial like places. You go there, yeah, I translate like everything. That's not a problem. You're welcome. Yes, please? Yeah, sure, sure. Goodbye. Okay, thank you very much. I guess like I guess you some of you have lessons, do you? Any questions? No? Okay, in this case, thanks a lot for coming. Thank you for your attention. Good luck in your studies. Yeah, hope to see you in Europe or or in the US. <laughs>